Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest narration of the web series, The Nature of Editors. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 160 Memory Transcription Subject Ambassador Tava of the Vendel Republic Date Standardized Human Time, March 22, 2137 the first Sapien Coalition convention vowed like a trimmed-down version of the Federation's meetings, with the familiar markings of diplomacy I'd seen for years. These were the parties that I'd devoted my life to negotiating with, long before I knew the peaceful union in the stars was a lie. Today's agenda was centered around anything relating to genetic research, though I imagined the dirty and salvation would be brought up later. The United Nations was owed basic courtesy after sparing Kalkwa so I hoped the avians had finally seen reason. On a personal note, Noah was present as my aide, though that was a bit reductive of his true purpose. I wished to try and see the species I'd known for years through his eyes. Humanity had cultivated an array of 38 races, more than just the ones who were recognized across Earth. The Tacken representative's grey hide, haunched over his station, told me their polity was ready to work. The infamous Dr. Zahn, who cheered on Sovlin, wasn't indicative of the larger Tycan species, who'd opened embassies to Earth and had been ready from the start to stick it to the Colchians. The iridescent carapace of the Varan ambassador was visible across from the Terran aid. Some predators were less than fond of insects, but this particular race had only ever gone from neutral to friendly. The Liation diplomat, who had always struck me as a little creepy, seemed to be hitting it off with an entire group of earthlings. The Drivla attaché, unsurprisingly, was snoozing at his desk. For the more well-known members of the audience, the crow cattle, the harken, and tillfish had chosen spots in the back of the hall, avoiding wandering UN diplomats. At the opposite end of the spectrum, Yodel Ambassador Laulo appeared to be flaunting battle footage to anyone who would watch, making exaggerated gestures to accompany his boastful rhetoric. Mazik, Vice President Quipper, had allowed a human colonial leader from Liberty's Bastion to share a station, which showed respect to the Terran settlement and Kowl's facility. The distant Paltons were flipping through a leaflet on their refugee problem, clearly wanting to insert it into next week's agenda. The Fissons and Nevox were full on hawking deals on materials until the meeting started. If anyone would have told me when Noah first landed on Skalgar that all of these species would be sharing a hall, and things would seem so normal, I would have laughed. To think Terrans would be so ready to leap into diplomacy, despite their checkered past. It was unthinkable from what we all knew of them. Noah offered a gentle smile. It's nice not to have to worry about so much of our appearances, love. Honestly, the United Nations is probably happy on the conflict of interest issue. On my side, I mean. The Vendel were, uh, special circumstances. Or our people would never have allowed an astronaut who's very close to the governor to be handling our business. Yeah, I suppose our connection was a diplomatic dilemma. Hopefully Governor Val doesn't prove to be too much to manage for your successor. He's ambitious. Val is shifty, but to complete that game, he wants to try to outmaneuver a genuine human diplomat. Well, he doesn't know what he's in for. The Vendel people didn't know how lucky they were to have someone honest, feeding, and sincere like you in office. Heaven knows, I wish we had a heartfelt people like you filling positions of power back home. Earth will never forget what you did for us, and I'm glad that we have you here at the SC now. You care? Of course I do. That's why when I heard from some Terran counterparts that you wanted to talk about various gene edits, namely research done to reverse the cure, I made sure to put the Vendel's tampering on the list and I invited a guest to speak about what affected humans have gone through. I appreciate what you're going for, but this might not be the most sympathetic audience for a predator wanting to regain the ability to eat flesh. I'm surprised the UN saw that this was a good strategy. Who did you invite? Me. A gruff voice echoed behind me. Noah failed to mask his obvious surprise, as he recited the red-haired human with the twisted nose and crisscross scars below each eye socket, Marcel Fraser was almost as well known as my astronaut after the footage of his torture was broadcast to billions across the galaxy. If any Terran could be sympathetic face to Sapien Coalition listeners, this was the one. 
There were some controversies around what happened with Slinek, of course. But by all counts, Marcel was a long-suffering herbivorous hero. He was also well acquainted with how Vendel thought and could frame why it was important to seek remediation, even for a vegetarian. It was all part of my plan, because what the SC really needs to talk about is beyond cured humans. It's about any omnivores forcibly converted to herbivory who want to go back. That idea would be a touchy subject, given how taboo predator diets had been throughout our lives. It took concentrated efforts to turn a blind eye to how Terrans operated. The first time Noah had a ham and cheese sandwich around me back at his pallet, I'd felt my years of brainwashing tried to desapienize the man I loved. On the bright side, at least it wasn't blood-soaked, a carcass munching like I envisioned that first time on offered together. If someone told me I'd accept nourishment of that kind years ago, but it didn't matter. I understood the nutritional requisites some species had, and whether the intent was to go back to omnivory or avoid allergic reactions, other SC races should have a say in their diet too. I extended a paw in the human handshake gesture. Marcel, I'm delighted to see you again under much more pleasant circumstances than the on-war torn earth or the prior time at the outpost. I'm glad to be doing something to help. Gov- uh, Sorry. Ambassador. It does sting a little that all of these listeners will just see me as a poster boy for human victimhood. Marcel sighed. I'm here to make everyone feel more sorry for me than they already do, right? Put your chin up. Unless you feel sorry for yourself, the Federation has done shitty things, and several of those shitty things happened to you. You are the perfect spokesman for millions affected by this. But why we're really here is to fix this mess, and you're here to convince them it needs fixing. Like it or not, you have a say over the choices made at the highest echelons of government. Clear all your uncertainty and decide how you plan to use that power. Noah whistled in appreciation. Know what she said. It's good for us to see you here, standing tall, from where you were not too long ago. You don't just earn pity. You're a damn inspiration, a testament to the human spirit. I don't know about that. I've always tried to do the right by people. And believe me, there'll be no theatrics needed for what this cure has taken from me. Marcel forced a smile, shoving his hands in his pocket. His hazel eyes swiveled with broadened intensity. I volunteered for the prototype antidote, and the risks are worth it for me. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate all of our researchers, but having the archive spell out exact gene edits is what made it feasible. I wonder if you'll pursue reverse mods for the Venlil. I tilted my head to one side. Yes, Noah, and I were discussing that. It's definitely something almost every Venlil can agree on, and I have Valen's blessing to declare our intention of moving forward with the reversal. On the debate stage, he acknowledged that we both see this as important to our people. The UN has been tabulating which changes need undoing for us since the archives. That's awesome. I wish Lenek was here to see that. He couldn't stand, uh, seeing what they did to you. My astronaut scowled. I don't support what your buddy did, but I get it. It infuriates me that Tava lived her whole life deprived of basic things because someone hundreds of years ago decided to kidnap her ancestors' children and to transform their genome. It wasn't so bad until we knew what had been taken from us, I sighed. But don't worry, I'll do what it takes to see that future generations aren't shackled for humans or for Venlil. The stage is all yours, Marcel, if you are ready. The redhead human nodded. No sense in delaying. I'll be going short and sweet. I offered a polite wave to the former UN soldier who'd been cured during an incident at the battle for Malou. What I hadn't told Noah when mentioning Venel genetic reversal was the decision I'd reached for myself. With my safety on the line, I wasn't sure he'd approve. The archive files of 45-G detailed the exact modifications the fossil made, with unique specificity. Even compared to the info on the protovirus used for different cure bioweapons. That entire file cluster was a changelog for my species. The Terrans had run simulations suggesting they could reverse the gene edits for Vendel kind, but it might be difficult to persuade others of my kind to trust those supposed corrections. For starters, we would never enjoy the benefits of properly developed limbs or olfactory organs. Still, if we wanted to erase the fossil's impact on our society, 
The majority of the herd needed to choose to go back to our empowered selves. It was a tough sell when it could have consequences for us in the present, and entailed having our DNA altered by another group of aliens. The success of reversal and any side effects on newly grown children wouldn't be seen for years. That left uh, the other part of the plan. It was going to be one fireball of a topic to broach with Noah. I hadn't asked how the human felt about children, obviously. It wasn't possible between the two of us, so starting a family had never had a reason to come up. Noah would make a wonderful father, but even if he's somehow okay with this outlandish idea, it won't truly be his kid. Bloodlines are important to humans, as I understand it. Marcel stepped to the podium, clearing his throat. Hello, ambassadors of the Sabian Coalition. It's an honor. I've always loved the diversity of life on my home world, and though finding it in the stars has brought a ton of suffering for me and my people, it is wonderful to see dozens of races that do share our vision. Maybe other humans haven't told you this, but, but we revered and feared extraterrestrials when you were the staff of Murth. I find our fears may have lacked uh, imagination. An attempt to destroy our planet, followed by a bioweapon designed to force fundamental changes upon us, bested our spooky sci-fi tropes. The Thafki ambassador raised a paw. Excuse me, you're Marcel, right? The one that has beaten half to death. Um, oh, of course, I should have introduced myself. Most of you know me as the exchange participant, who was taken prisoner and got the space makeover from the Gojid's claws, with a complimentary ten days of starvation. Fun times. What you may not know is that I was later dosed by an aerialized version of the cure, which triggered a severe initial reaction that left me bedridden for weeks. Breathing in vapors of animal products, they can send me into anaphylaxis. I carry an EpiPen around at all times, just in case now, even here. You're saying that you were forcefully converted omnivore like us, the Crow Cattle Ambassador Nula choked. Precisely. I'm here to lay out why that's a problem. A public health hazard for anyone who's had the effects of this bioweapon passed along. I was already a vegetarian, yet the slightest trace of anything that's an animal can kill me now. I can't live on my homeworld, around my family. I shudder to think how many unexplained incidents occur on worlds of fully cured species. You can have sincere intentions never to go near predator food, but a bug accidentally gets into your meal or an animal brushes up against a crop you don't wash fully problem. It could be you, could be your children, or anyone you care about. Everyone's biology reacts differently. Forced herbivation can't help be allowed to exist in a free society. Mazic dignitary Cooper looked displeased. I am not an omnivore, but wouldn't undoing the cure mean people could eat meat? That really isn't acceptable in our cultures. Maybe you should just be left alone and the cured peoples can be more careful with food prep, rather than all of us opening the door to dead meals. Look, I care about what I put into my body, too. I always understood how you feel about predation, and how the idea of it sickens you. But if you believe in something this strongly, you won't change your mind just because you have the choice to change. You believe that these societies are moral and righteous due to their dietary abstinence, Yet, they don't have the free will to do anything else. They're forced to comply. How is it righteous at all when it is the only path you can take? All the cure does is risk the lives of people who would supposedly stay the course regardless. I raise my tail. For my fellow delegates' information, Marcel will be on a human trial of the cure reversal drug to test its efficacy. I can speak to the fact that fossil gene edits are never harmless and always about controlling anyone who defies their indoctrination. Thank you, Ambassador. I've said my piece, but I wanted it to be clear how much suffering it has caused me. I don't feel that I deserve this. I don't feel that your grandchildren deserve this either. I'll take my leave, and according to my notes, you're supposed to have a short recess to discuss this, sir. Please support safety and choice. The red-haired human ducked his head, and some of the more Terran-familiar individuals tried to make smacking sounds against the desks to imitate applause. It was always refreshing to see bits of human culture catching on. I appreciated clapping as an unmessable way to let the speaker know their words were appreciated. 
Part of me wondered where Marcel, Frasier, and Slinek would be if not for his capture all those months ago. Another aspect of my brain wondered where the Vendel would be now, had we never been turned into our present state. I didn't know if it would be a better outcome, but it would be more authentic. Marcel is right about none of the gene-edited species deserving this. We need to make this right for the next generation. I have to hope that Noah takes what I'm about to say well. Hey, Noah. My chest was a bundle of nerves, though not in the same way as when I first accepted the binocular-eyed Captain's hail. I'm sorry to spring this on you, but can we have us word somewhere private? There's something I need to tell you. The human flinched. Uh oh, uh, I don't like the sound of that. H have I done something wrong? Uh, are we breaking up? What? No. It has to do with uh, what we were talking about when I take the stage. Please uh, just follow me. I scurried out of the meeting auditorium, finding my way to a private discussion chamber. Noah looked apprehensive, but shut the door behind him. What if he was offended by what I was about to propose or despise the idea? Would he get angry that I recklessly wished to be among the first to have my gene edits undone and bring the uncrippled child into this world? My ears bunched up with frustration as I struggled to think how I would explain my sudden shift in future plans. The astronaut was growing more concerned by the moment, so I knew I needed to just spit it out. I'm getting the gene edits reversed, uh... I want to be one of the first to show my people they can trust it. Like Marcel said, the risks are worth it. To see what was taken from us undone, I blurted. Noah tapped his chin with his finger. Tava, you know I'll support your decision. You should have bodily autonomy, that said. It won't change anything about your present circumstances, now or ever. It's about future generations. Is it worth the risk when there's no, um, offspring? Yeah. Uh, about that. Oh, I, uh, I see. It's wonderful that you're thinking about motherhood, though I admit I'm caught a bit off guard. I am, uh, I know I should never say this out loud, but aren't you past birthing age, you know? Haven't you hit menopause? <laughs> this is awkward. I recoiled in confusion. Menopause? I have no idea what you're talking about. Noah's expression became more flustered. It's, uh, a uh, human woman, um, they, they, they stop getting p periods and, uh, being able to have children during their, uh, middle age. Uh, I'm gonna stop talking about this. I really should have researched more about Vendel by now, but I didn't even think of that. That's not a thing for us, or any other species that I've heard of. I love you humans, but you're extremely strange on an anatomical level. Also, uh, what's a period? Uh, maybe, um... Maybe you should talk about this with Sarah. I don't think I am uh, qualified in this department, but I don't have a problem with you wanting children, per se. It's just, you know, that's not something that could happen between a human and a vindal. That's why you pulled me aside, right? Are you asking for uh, an open relationship? Frankly, I want to be exclusive. I'm asking if you'd be okay with me seeking a reverse model donor so that you and I could raise a child uncrippled and free of gene edits as our own. If that would violate what you see as an exclusivity or as starting a family. Noah was quiet for a few seconds. Sorry, I'm processing that. Tava, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. If this is what you want, then we'll make it work. I'll love our little Vendel Goober with all my heart. <sighs> I'm so relieved that you're okay with it. I know that it's a lot to ask, but... I need us to be a part of the building that future generation. Our legacy. I guess peace in the galaxy and saving the human race won't be enough of a legacy. Never hurts to add a little more. With you by my side, I feel like I can always go beyond what I ever dreamed was possible. Now, uh, let's go get the SC on our side. I can't wait to tell them all about our plans to restore the Vendel to our true selves. My human wrapped an arm around my shoulders, and I gave him a grateful ear flick for his unwavering support. As long as the predator stood beside me, no challenge was insurmountable. Together, we returned to the main venue to rally our allies around the gene reversal program that would play a huge part in our future lives. End of chapter. There is a new legend on the horizon. Blueberry Cat has taken the T6 Patreon spot. Thank you very much, and I am sure that I speak for everyone when I say that.
I would just like to thank our T5 members, Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Dregzoon WRE, Blueberry Cat, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Bushmaster 177, and Leslie 517. Thank you very much.